Hey guys, this book is about Greece. It's called Ancient Greece. Okay. Um, and okay, it says the origins of the Greek. At the height of its power, the Greek Empire encompassed lands in, on three continents. But the roots of this vast civilization were humble, beginning in a scattered group of islands and peninsulas in the Aegean Sea. Greece before the Greeks. All the people have lived in the Greek peninsula since the Stone Age. It was not until 3000 BC that an early civilization began to emerge on Crete. The largest Greek island. We call these people the Minoans after the legendary King Minos, who lived in a great palace at Knossos. The palace was similar to a small town. Inside, there were many comfortable houses. Um, with beautifully decorated walls and skillful plumbing. From the size and splendor of Knossos, it is clear that the Minoans were sophisticated in both art and technology. A lot of civilization. The island of Crete was the important part of the Greek world for over a thousand years. But, in 1450 B.C., a volcanic eruption destroyed the Minoan civilization. The sudden disappearance may have been the basis for later Greek tales of Atlantis, but the lost continent that sank into the sea. Apart from this myth, however, the Greeks had no memory of these earlier people. The First Greek Speakers a new group of people arrived in Greece from Central Europe um, around 2000 BC. They spoke Greek, or at least we know that they wrote it by drawing pictures for words like Egyptian hieroglyphics, but it is still recognizable the language spoken by Greeks today recognizably the language, making it the oldest living European language. Only Chinese has a longer history. These first Greek-speaking peoples are known as the Mykenaeans. Mykenaeans? The Minoans, it says, built several large palaces. The largest and most impressive was at Knossos. It was five stories high and had more than 1,300 rooms. Tales of Old. Oh, wait. Over here. Mykenaeans um, are the first Greek-speaking peoples. After one of their city, Mykenaea, um, is the name... Uh, on the Greek mainland. Um, they dominated all the lands around the Aegean Sea uh, until about 1100 B.C. Um, but, um, and then their influence, too, began to fade. This may have been because of invasion by the Dorians, a group of Greek-speaking people from the north. Uh, the Mekinaeans may also have suffered economic troubles, perhaps a series of bad harvests. Whatever the reason, they disappeared, and the Dark Ages began a 400-year period of Greek history 
about which very little is known. Okay. Tales of old. This marble figure holding a cup made on the islands of the Cyclades and one of the earliest pieces of Greek art is over 4,000 years old. Okay. That's Knossos. Okay. Tales of old. One thing we do know about the Dark Ages is that the Greeks started to use an alphabet rather than a picture script. Uh, this meant that the tales and stories of the old days that had previously been passed on from generation to the next by spoken word could now be written down. Two of the most famous of these stories, the Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, were composed by the poet Homer and because became the basis for Greek literature. Greeks in later times learned to recite the whole of these long poems from memory. Emergence of the Greeks. When Greeks emer Greece emerged from the dark ages, no one put no one place was more important than another. As Knossos or Mykenae had been, each area or city was independent. But all Greeks thought of themselves as one people. They called themselves Hellenes or Hellenes, and their con country Hellas names that they still use today. For the Greeks to be a Hellen Hellene was to be of the same stock and the same speech. And as the ancient Greek historian Herodotus wrote, to worship the same gods and keep the same customs. Centuries later, the name Greece was given to the country by the Romans. The mainland of Greece is very mountainous. The first scattered communities grew up in these areas where the land was fertile. The difficult terrain encouraged the growth of sea transport, which helped the Greeks spread over the eastern Mediterranean. Lemnos, Troy, Mytilene, Rhodes, Terra, Sparta, Olympia, Corinth, Mycenae, Plataea, Marathon, Athens, um, Thermopylae, Delphi are all the cities. Um, okay. Well, the land of Greece. For much of the year, Greece is hot and dry. Winters, though, are often severe, and the Greeks in ancient times found it hard to earn a living from the land. This Omphalo stone, which stood at Delphi, marked the place that was believed to be the center of the world. Skeleton of a land. Greece is a land of high mountains. These were once covered with trees, but as the population grew, the forests were cut down and the good soil washed away. There is some flat land at the foot of the mountains, but only enough to support small communities. In ancient times, the people who lived there needed all this land for growing crops, so they kept few cattle. Some farmers spread their farms up into the hills by building terraces along the slopes. Beekeeping was widespread among these people since honey was the only sweetener known in the ancient world. 
What now remains is like the bones of a body wasted and diseased. diseased. With all the rich and fertile earth fallen away, and only the scraggy skeleton of the land left, and the mountains supporting nothing but bees, said Plato. A hardy people. The land itself had its own natural riches, including fine marble for building, good clay for pottery, and some minerals. The silver mines near Athens and the iron mines near um, Asparta brought wealth to both these cities, but for most ancient Greeks, life was difficult, and they developed into a hardy race of people as a result. The warm climate, though, gave them one great blessing they could spend most days in the open air. The Greek communities that eventually grew up throughout the country were cut off from each other by high mountains. Uh, for this reason, each group had a strong sense of its own independence. We now call these groups city-states, although they were more like small towns. Fierce rivalry between the various city-states, particularly Athens and Sparta, is a key issue in Greek history. Um... Um, I think we're going to pause right here. Let's see. So I'll see you guys later. My page is uh, facebook.com, use all play.